Hello again, my fabulous second and third graders of Seattle Public Schools. I'm Miss Keller, and this is Making Meaning. To review, we've been practicing the reading strategy of visualizing, or using the words in the text to make a picture in our mind. When we visualize, it helps us to understand the story and enjoy what we're reading. For this lesson, we are going to need some additional supplies to practice our strategy. Please take a minute to gather some paper and pencils in order to draw and write your mental images. Now remember, there will be times during this lesson that I ask you some questions and you will need to turn and talk. You may use a stuffed animal, a pet, a family member, one of my friends I have here with me in order to share your thinking. It's important to share what we're thinking because it helps us understand something better. Wonderful. Scholars, I need you to get your imagination ready and think back to yesterday when we read the poem Dragonfly. We described how the dragonfly moves and what it does. What do you remember about the poem Dragonfly? Maybe you were talking about with your partner how you were thinking about how the dragonfly moves with its colorful body when it lands on the dock and gets the sun shining through its wings. This warm-up is going to help you today because we're going to hear another poem. But I'm not going to tell you what the animal is. I'm leaving that part out. So I really want you to listen in to what the animal might look like and what it does and use the clues in the poem to help you with your visualization. Don't worry, I will always read the poem twice in case you miss something on the first read. This one is called The Masked One by Georgia Heard. It wears a mask as if it's Halloween and tiptoes through our yard while I watch through the screen. A screen has very small holes in it and is put up by a window or a door to keep the bugs out. And tiptoes through our yard while I watch through the screen. Clink falls the garbage can lid to the ground as if it is saying, trick or treat. That's a saying people use on Halloween. As if it is saying, trick or treat. But the cans are empty, no food to be found. It walks away on tiny feet. I'm going to read it one more time. It wears a mask as if it's Halloween and tiptoes through our yard while I watch through the screen. Clank falls the garbage can lid to the ground as if it is saying trick or treat. But the cans are empty, no food to be found. It walks away on tiny feet. Scholars, before we share today, I wanted to remind you of our sentence stems from yesterday. I pictured blank. Try that with me. I pictured blank. Or I imagined blank. Try that with me. I imagined blank. Wonderful. Now I want you to think, what does this animal look like? Go ahead. Share your ideas with your partner now. Before I share what my friends and I were talking about, I want you to think about one other thing. I want you to think about what the animal was doing. Go ahead and think, and when you're ready, share with your partner. Mm -hmm. 
Rainbow Fish and I were talking just now. Rainbow Fish noticed that the animal was wearing a mask. And I said, I imagined that he had very small feet. Perhaps you were thinking about how it was in the garbage can looking for food. I even thought, maybe it's night since it's Halloween and that's usually celebrated in the evening or nighttime. What animals do I know that have a face like a mask and are out going through the garbage can at night? Scholars, now that you've had a chance to discuss your, discuss your visualizations, we're gonna take some time to draw what we've been talking about. You have about five minutes to think and draw about what you visualized. Go ahead and start doing that now. Scholars, I'm now going to draw my mental image that I pictured, but feel free to keep adding more details to yours as I work. Well, I pictured a mask. And tiny little feet. Now, I'm not the best artist, but I'm gonna try my best and so should you. Tiny feet. And then, oh, that's right. This, the garbage can lid is on the ground. Maybe got my garbage can behind it. And then I'm gonna draw some stars in the sky because I'm visualizing that it's nighttime. And I'm going to give it a ground. Okay. 
So, did you get it? Mask, the mask, a raccoon, tiny feet. Awesome scholars. Now, now that you've got your brains going, we're going to reread the poem together again, and I'm going to show you the words. I want you to pick out the words that helped you with your visualization. Go ahead and follow along on the screen while I read. The masked one. Raccoon wears a mask as if it's Halloween and tiptoes through our yard while I watch through the screen. Clank falls the garbage can lid to the ground as if Raccoon is saying, trick or treat. But the cans are empty, no food to be found. Raccoon walks away on tiny feet. I want you to think, what words helped you? Go ahead and write after you share. The words that helped me are The words that helped me are, where's a mask, clank goes the garbage can lid. And tiny feet. I'm curious, what words did you include in your drawing that aren't mentioned in the story? What made you decide to add that to your picture? For example, I added stars to my picture because I imagine this happening at night. It's okay if you have some additional things to your visualization because of your own life experiences. They'll all be a little bit different but we always use the words in the text to help support our thinking. Scholars, you have been working so hard on the reading strategy of visualizing this week. We have used texts to help make pictures in our minds, and now it's your turn to practice visualizing independently or on your own. I'm gonna pull up our chart that we have made together. to remind us of our steps. Oops. There we go. Step one, get your just right book. Remember, three to four tricky words, and after a page, you should be able to tell yourself what you just read. I just read blank. Step two, read with visualizing in mind. After a couple pages, ask yourself, what did I picture in my mind? I pictured blank, and the words that helped me are blank. Step three, keep reading for 20 minutes at least. Stop and practice your strategy on every couple pages. I have so enjoyed learning with you this week, scholars, and to miss you very much. There is one additional activity that you could do. Before I go, why don't you think about making your own animal poem? You read a lot of animal poems this week, and we practiced picking out words and phrases that helped us as readers visualize what an animal does and what it looks like. We can use these same skills to make our own writing piece and be our own authors. Create a list of animals and pick one. Write down as many things as you can about what the animal does or what it looks like. And then after that, use your imagination to write your own poem about that animal. And if you like, you can do what I did today and take out the name of the animal and have a family member try and guess what animal you wrote about. Have a great week, scholars, and have fun.